good. So I'm going to go try and fly through these slides because I have a lot to cover. Uh, I got 55 slides and 45 minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and kick it off and get started. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and talk to you guys about the 419 problems of BEC. Uh, and the title of my uh, presentation is I've got 419 problems and BEC isn't just one. And I'll be kind of walking through a lot of the problems in business email compromise, a lot of problems on the 419 side, and kind of walking through with some of the actual things that are happening and why we need to stop pointing fingers back and forth at each other to say, oh, well, you need to go do look at this, you need to go do this. It's actually something where it's not my problem, it's not your problem, it's all of our problems and we have to come together in order to fix it. So. A little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Ronnie Togzowski. I'm a senior threat researcher over at Agari. Um, and I work on, uh, specifically, I work on the Agari's asset team where we respond back to attackers. Um, I'm also a hacker of things. Most of you guys, folks know me as iHeartMalware. Um, I also tweet a lot of memes uh, and also do a lot of work on the BEC side. In previous slides, I also did work on the APT side as well as dabbling in crimeware. And I'm also in OSCP. Uh, one of the certs I'm very happy to have. That was a really fun test when I was, when I was able to take that. Um, so what I'm going to be covering today, I'm going to be walking through the current state of BEC and where things are as of right now in this point of time. Uh, walking through the 419 problems of BEC. I'll also be covering uh, what happened in the BEC landscape with COVID 2020 and how a billion dollars was able to be returned. Uh, we'll also be talking about voodoo and blood sacrifices because, you know, you can't talk about business email compromise without talking about fun things like that. And serious, but more importantly, seriously, we need to start fixing this because it's a big problem, as you'll see. Um, typically, I try and glaze over hard topics and everything, but we're going to be covering it. We're going to be talking death. We're going to be talking suicide. Uh, we're going to be talking psychological abuse. And it's something where normally I wouldn't be covering that stuff in a technical presentation about business email compromise. However, these are things that are actually happening. So you're getting the 100% unfiltered truth on this um, as things that we, I've seen in the field, as things that others have seen in the field, as things that are actually happening as they're happening. So when it's something where I say, yep, we're talking about voodoo, I'm not trying to mock the stuff. I'm going to be talking to it from the perspective of this is actually what the scammers believe and how they operate. So let's go ahead and get this kick this off. Um, so from the trenches of business email compromise, it's an absolute mess. And to put it into perspective, it's an absolute dumpster fire. And a lot of times we joke around and we throw dumpster fires around in information security, but this is actually a dumpster fire and we can prove it mathematically. So according to IC3, um, they've been tracking, uh, which is a reporting agency of the FBI, um, they have been tracking business email compromise for several years now. Um, and as of September 10th, 2019, BEC was responsible for more than $26 billion lost globally. And to put that into perspective, that's either money that went out and didn't come back or money that went out and then was reversed. So those were successful attacks. So you may think, okay, that's a big number. What, can you go ahead and put that into context for me? So for people who, are, who like math and who like looking at graphs, um, the best way to see this graph is big pieces of pie bad small pieces of pie, still bad, but less, not necessarily less bad, but also important. Um, so when we actually look at the 2019 statistics that came out of IC3, um, when we look at business email compromise, it was responsible for over 40% of all cybercrime reported to the FBI. So what that means is that if you had a victim that came and said, hey, I lost money, can you go ahead and help me out? Any victim that went to the FBI for losses that money, that's money that was that either went out or that was lost. So of all of those crimes that were reported to the FBI for all of 2019, 40% of that was business email compromise, period. There's no debating that and everything. That's the numbers that they have for all the crime and the statistics that they've done. When you start dabbling out and uh, looking at other parts of BEC, you also have things like real estate scams and romance scams that get included into that because they're also part of that pie. And when you start looking at those other crimes that overlap with it, that number goes up to almost 70%, um, including lottery scams, which is only 1% on that. Um, so I've been saying BEC and business email compromise, but what is it? How can we go ahead and actually define that? So most everybody has seen this type of crime in their organization. And whenever we say BEC, that's kind of more an umbrella term to include a lot of these things. What most people think of BEC is actually business email spoofing, or will someone will say, hey, I'm the CEO of a company, can you go ahead and do an urgent wire transfer for me? And then some of the other, other end says, yeah, I'll be happy to do that transfer for you. So they'll go ahead and they'll say, okay, here's a bank account, send me $40,000, $40,000 goes out the door. That's how BEC works. 
Um, and sometimes they may say, hey, I need to take a, take a look at a purchase order. Uh, more commonly, lately, uh, lately, they've been saying, hey, can you send me some gift cards? Can you pay a vendor? And then like, yes, I'll be happy to do that. Let's go ahead and send, and send that money out. Everything's gonna be all happy and hockey dory But that's actually a scammer on the other end who's sending the, who's trying to have you send that money. And that goes back to the scammers. So when we also, we also have to keep in mind that 419 scams, AKA Nigerian print schemes are also part of this. And it's something where we need to be aware of that and understand that that's also something that's looped into that too. Um, and the reason is the scammers who are doing BEC are the same scammers who's doing the 419 scams, such as your check fraud, your non-delivery scams, reshipping schemes, um, and all those other things. So there's a, a lot, once we start looking at 419 and BEC, those lines really start getting blurry. So some of the things that they do, as I mentioned earlier, they do the actors who are doing BEC also do romance scams. They'll do wire fraud, which is the, the main thing of BEC. Uh, you've got lottery scams. We've seen cases where malware has been um, included in it. Phishing kits, account takeovers, uh, business email spoofing. Again, that's kind of what most people think of as BEC. Um, we've seen doing Craigslist scams, check fraud, mystery shopper scams. Some actors have even used money mule, romance mules to do drug trafficking. Uh, payroll diversion, fake checks have gone to escorts. We've seen RV scams where they'll go and said, hey, you want to buy this RV? Here you go. And it turns out not to be. Um, we've seen them do use fools for the dead. Um, so if somebody is deceased, they will actually get all their social security information, um, their credit card information, use that in order to um, try and steal money from them. We've also seen veteran email compromise where they'll compromise a third party and then try and use that information in order to come and uh, take advantage in, in order to scam that person. Identity theft, human and, human and blood sacrifices. Again, we'll cover that here by the end. Um, and also 419 crimes I've probably forgotten. So one of the, when, one of the um, attacks that we've seen that uh, was a group that we saw called Silent Starling, um, they really like to use account takeovers where they would send phishing kits to organizations and try and get emails and passwords for the organization. And what they would do is they would set up an email forward rule in that inbox. When they set up that email forward rule, they would have those emails go out to a mailbox that they under their control. So if you as a incident responder saw that um, and saw that their a password was leaked and you went to go change your password, they still have persistence on that um, account. They're still able to siphon those emails out. And that's exactly how Silent Starling would do it is they would try and they would use man in the mailbox in order to siphon those emails off and once those emails were off going to that other, um, to that email box that they had under their control, if something such as a purchase order, an invoice, or something that was financially motivating that they could inject into, they would take that information and send an account um, under their, or they would send the bank account under their control and say, hey, can you do this wire transfer for me from this account instead? And what they would do is they would hijack, essentially hijack that thread in that discussion and by doing that, they would um, essentially take the money um, as they were able to go. Um, when we were looking at this group, we saw them, they had compromised 39 employees at one US company. Uh, and for them, it was uh, five campaigns between September 2018 and March 2019. Um, we also saw another case where they had compromised 13 email accounts in within about 13 minutes. Um, for one of their February 2019 campaigns. So one of the things that a lot of people think of is like, oh, ma um, BEC actors, they're simple. They're not doing a lot of stuff. But in order for an attacker to have hands on keyboard and have access to the information within 30 minutes, that's pretty quick. Um, some of the APTs I've seen in the past, I've had hands on keyboard within about 20 minutes. Um, but many of them move extremely quick, just like the, just like the APTs um, to where they're able to go through and do different things. And you may be like, Ronnie, are you saying account takeover and phishing kits are the same and related to BEC? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that from the BEC side, we've actually seen actors using phishing kits in order to steal information from your organizations. Um, and this is a mapping of the victims that they were able to get uh, based on phishing, based on the logs for their phishing kits. Um, so we were able to map back where everything was, where the, actor, where the actors and the accounts were that they had compromised. So you may be thinking, okay, this is an isolated event, Ronnie, you're full of it. It's something where account takeover never happens. So here's another group uh, who is doing it. Uh, this, with this actor, we were able to capture 38 unique URLs um, for separate phishing campaigns. Uh, this actor had, uh, when we were looking at the actions that this actor did, they had done Craigslist scams, check fraud, 
credit card fraud, vehicle advertisement fraud. They were buying and selling, or they were uh, trying to get items on Depop, which is a small place to send um, where you can send like small uh, products that you're making. Um, they were doing FAFSA fraud, unemployment fraud, bank loan fraud. They were targeting California teachers' pensions. Uh, they were doing FEMA disaster relief recovery, tax refunds. Uh, and this was a group that we called Scatter Canary. Um, and when we go and actually did digging into this group, um, this was a very interesting case study where we were able to uncover over 10 years of operations for this group. And what we were able to see is this was one of our very first things where we were able to get that. Um, it was kind of opening a can of worms for us and it kind of unveiled that true face of business email compromise and that as we look at BEC in the industry is something where we only started seeing it once they started targeting our companies, once they started targeting their organizations, that became a tech problem. However, when we actually trace back that history, this is something where this has been persistent long before BEC was even a thing. Um, and with Scattered Canary, that's where we were able to identify that the actor had dabbled in romance scams, they had dabbled in check fraud, um, they had dabbled in many, many other things even before BEC was a thing, um, when it started really taking off in 2015. Um, and Scattered Canary with their targeting, um, that's one of the reasons that we called them scattered was because they would go and target all these other things. Uh, they were very much our canary into the, um, into our visibility into BEC, um, and how this stuff works. So it's something where a lot of the 419 actors who are doing this stuff are the same people who's doing the BEC actor. There is no difference between that. Um, and it's something where the only reason that we call it BEC is because it's something where that's how we track it. We track it as its own unique thing. However, this is just a symptom of something that's been longer and persisting. So it's just new times and different crimes for a lot of the actors. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at an update for Scattered Canary because we released that document back in 2019. Um, they're still around. They're still doing stuff. So they went and started going after unemployment fraud and unemployment benefits. So once COVID-19 hit, you had a lot of people in the United States who were trying to release unemployment funds and a lot of different money for the people who were having trouble with it. A lot of people here have lost jobs, they are losing houses, um, they're really struggling right now. So a lot of um, states really tried to push that unemployment money out as quickly as they could to help the people that needed it. And that's obviously a good thing. People are struggling, let's go ahead and help them out. Um, so Scatter Canary very much follows the money and will go wherever they can in order to make a dollar. So once they started doing the unemployment funds, that was millions of dollars that went out to Nigeria. And specifically the way that we saw them, they would go and file for their returns for uh, different states. And they would put the month stuff on the green dot card. As the green dot card went out, they would receive um, a confirmation with the bank account and routing number for that green dot card. So they would go and take the money out of that card as that card was being sent to that destination. So if you go and look and see references to where people started getting a whole lot of green dot cards that they never received, that's directly related to Scatter Canary and other BEC actors who were using this specific technique in order to wire money out. And you're like, okay, that's just a couple, couple of returns. How big could that be? Um, it was actually kind of a really big deal. Um, so much so that hundreds of millions of dollars was actually lost in Washington State. Um, and specifically, Washington State um, had, if you start looking at references, they had actually lost a lot of money as well. Um, I think they had lost, I think it was upwards of $700 million. Um, and when we actually look at unemployment fraud just in general, it's something where there was like 14 states that we're up to now. Um, Hawaii, Maine, Massachusetts, um, New York was in there, if I remember right. Um, <clears throat> and again, it's something where a lot of actors are going after the type of money that they can go ahead and get just for this fraud. Um, good news. Uh, I know Washington State had $500 million reversed. Um, this, this reference said, says three, but I think 500 million was the total, I, was the last total I saw. Um, Maryland uh, has also received $500 million reversed um, for that. So that's over a billion dollars in people filing unemployment fraud uh, with a lot of it tied directly to um, BEC and 419 actors and groups like Scattered Canary. And it's something where I, I've been given a lot of flack in the industry just because people are like, oh, BEC isn't really important. There's really not much to it. But at the end of the day, do you think a scammer would rather go and spend two years developing a piece of malware, having us researchers tracking that um, in order to take only $100 million? 
or do you think they may want to go, or do you think it might be more beneficial and more cost benefit and a better cost for them to go and start filing these unemployment frauds? Again, they, we, again, the money that came back, we know of a billion dollars that was reversed to these scams. We know, a four, and that's for two states, we know of 14 states and Guam. It's something where that's a big gap, it's still a lot going. Um, and it's something where this is very much a story that's still to be continued. Uh, update for when I did this um, for remote for the first conference back in June, I had the sad face, but I have now marked out that sad face to be a happy face. Um, again, this story is still to be continued, but it's now a somewhat happy face. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, some of the uh, let's go ahead and take a look at another actor called uh, that we uh, that we looked at called Exaggerated Lion, and what they do is they will actually use real checks and real victims in order to go ahead and continue doing their fraud. So one of the things that they would do is they would send an email to a company and say, hey, can you go ahead and make a vendor payment for me? Um, I need you to go ahead and pay this invoice. And they'll say, okay, here's where it needs to go. Here's the name of the person it needs to be made out to. And that's, and that's how they'll do it and everything. And you, the organization will send that check to that person um, or send it through a series of mules in order to get it to that person. Um, and then that romance victim in the, in the case we saw, they will go and cast that check and not realize what's happening. Um, specific to the one romance victim that we found uh, directly related to Exaggerated Lime, uh, they, were, uh, they were responsible for over $100,000 in fraud. Um, one of them was responsible for stealing money from a Methodist church. Um, and it's something where the scammers were able to manipulate and um, convince the victim that they were actually somebody else that they had said, and this person was 100% a romance victim. Um, I'll be coming back to the, I'll be coming back to romance victims here shortly, um, but just know that with Exaggerated Lion, they were very much directly tied to, um, a, they were they use a lot of romance victims for their operations. Um, something else that also happens with a lot of scammers is fake checks. Um, and when I say fake checks, that's a check that um, if you go and deposit, it's going to bounce. Um, we've seen things where they'll use fake checks for products and services. Um, Craigslist is obvious, an obvious one that a lot of attackers have used. Um, they'll use Depop and other person-to-person -person product websites. Um, typically, those are non-delivery scams um, where they'll say, hey, go ahead and ship and send this. I'll send you a check for $2,000. Oh, it's $3,500. Go ahead and just cash it, keep a couple of it, and then to give this, send the money over to this person here. Um, and it's something where once the product gets shipped, the money gets cashed, you're pretty much out everything. And that's just how the scheme works. Um, another angle that we've seen based on the, uh, based on the BEC actors is we've seen references of um, mystery shopper scams. Um, where what they'll do is they'll go ahead and they'll create a website asking for uh, mystery shoppers. They'll have them fill out the information, send them a check, and there we go. That's how this stuff works. They'll go and get their money. The money is sent. And again, all that money gets lost. Um, what really sucks is when you have cases where you see so much of this fraud, you have 160 checks sent to 30 states, and you have absolutely no idea who to pass that to. Because again, when your check is something where it's under $2,500, okay, that's now a state level, and you now have, that's now state level fraud, then you have these 160 checks, do you give that over to postal inspectors where they can go ahead and see the stuff? Do you pass over to the FBI because you had all of these other states that were involved and it really, and that becomes a lot, a big problem with fighting BEC and a lot of these related informations and a lot of this related fraud rather, where it really becomes a point of you see so much fraud that you have no centralized area to pass that. And again, you would think, okay, pass it all to the FBI. But again, it's something where there is, this fraud is so large and so rampant that it becomes extremely difficult to start trying to file and process this and trying to understand that. Another place where we saw fake checks um, sent was they were targeting escorts. And they were, and <clears throat> in those emails, they were like, hey, can you offer my client companionship? Um, can you be charming, uh, conversational, have a sense of humor? Um, and with this one, we saw them targeting escorts out in uh, Washington, DC. So I don't know about you, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that those checks probably were not reported to law enforcement, um, just because it's something where you normally wouldn't have that, those type of checks being reported. Um, and it's something where I don't know the legality in DC, but something where they prob that was probably even more fraud that the, that the scammers had gotten that more money went out. Um, so speaking of other laws, uh, other crimes that don't get reported to law enforcement, let's go ahead and start talking about romance scams. Um, when we start looking at romance scams and we start looking at BEC and we start looking at that entire ecosystem, uh, your actor needs some sort of infrastructure. So 
just as we have malware samples, just have we have IP addresses, domains, we're associated with that. Um, this email compromises in the same way and they need some sort of infrastructure in order to do their operations. For them, and for a lot of Nigerian scammers as a whole, um, they like to use romance victims. And what they'll do is they will use the, a network of romance wheels in order to move money from here to here to here. And in order to actually convince them, they will become in a relationship with that person and they will actually fool them into saying, yes, I'm actually in a relationship where um, I'm going to start sending you pictures of myself and everything. And oh yeah, by the way, can you, wire, can you send this cash for me? The thing that sucks the most is the amount of emotional and psychological damage that goes along with romance, with romance victims and romance scams. And some of the stories that we've seen is absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, it's some of the worst crime that I have seen um, out there just because you can, a lot of the people tend up emotionally and uh, mostly and psychologically abused. And it really leaves a person just trying to figure out what's real and not because they were completely lied to based on what they saw. So the way that this works with a lot of the victims um, that we've seen, um, they will actually build profiles in order to start engaging with their potential victims. Um, they'll go ahead and try and build trust with the victim and say, and say very loving things. Um, yes, I want to go ahead and be in a relationship with you. I'm over here in this far country, um, but it's something where we want to try and have a relationship, so let's try and work this out. Um, in the case of Exaggerated Lion, uh, that in order to convince that person to go and cast checks for a Methodist church, in order to go and cast checks for these other victims too, that uh, that scammer told the victim that it was for her inheritance. So the victim, the entire time he was operating the stuff, he actually thought he was in a relationship with the, with the woman. Uh, the relationship went on for two and a half years. And every time he cast a check, he thought, it was, he thought it was taxes for the lawyer for her inheritance. And if it's something where if my wife asked me, hey, can you go and open the bank account for me? Of course I'm going to do it. So a lot of these victims actually think that they're in this relationship. And in the case of exaggerated line, the bank says the check's okay, so it's got to be okay. And how do you actually control someone? And that's what they'll do is they'll tug on those heartstrings in order to manipulate those people into doing whatever they want them to. And you're probably looking at me right now going, uh, romance scams, fake checks, BEC, really, Ronnie? Um, but no, again, it's something where we've actually seen this directly tied to a lot of BEC actors and a lot of the way that they operate. Um, the one case we saw, we saw Craigslist scams to send fake checks to work from home victims. Uh, we saw them targeting uh, farmers dating, Ashley Madison, BDM, BDSM dating websites, uh, tax fraud, literally the same account, literally the same actor, literally the same inbox. I mean, I, I can't argue with where it's all the same stuff. So it's something where it's like, this is just how this stuff works. These actors are not doing one type of crime. They're not doing just BEC. They're doing all of these other things in order to try and send money back and forth. And in order to engage with their romance victims, uh, they'll use what they call scripts and formats in order to engage with this, in, in order to engage with their victims. So this is Larry. He's a single divorce with three, two and three kids. Uh, per the script and he'll say hi beautiful how are you um, I'm widowed and I'm just looking for a new relationship and this is the type of stuff that your victims will get um, and just as we have debugging information in um, on the malware side there's cases where it's like okay you need to go ahead and uh, put your EIP make sure EIP is equal to this put your jump here in order to go ahead and do this section here but if your malware blows up you got to do this thing here um, Likewise, these romance scripts have the same, have similar debugging information too, um, where they may say, okay, if, you're, if your person is getting um, skeptical, go ahead and tell them this, or if this thing happens here, tell them that, um, in order to kind of keep that conversation going. Um, we've seen some of these where it's upwards of like 28 and 30 layers deep before, in order to engage back and forth with a victim. So your victim, so your scammer doesn't have to think about what they're saying. They can just copy paste this blah and text back and forth. And that's what allows them to target many, many people during a day is they're able to have all this stuff to where they can send back and forth. And if you remember, there was a screenshot back from Exaggerated Lion with a $16,000 check. Um, this was going back to the vendor payment. And again, that quote unquote vendor was actually a romance victim. So what that romance victim did was he went and deposited that check to a bank account, opened a brand new, uh, brand new check account. Um, and uh, you could tell that everybody on the sides of the bank were skeptical because that the check after the 10 days, it went for another day of verification, but it was something that was a real check. It was in the name and it went, it was able to go through and it cleared fine. 
Um, initially, the actor wanted, um, wanted their victim to deposit the money to a Bitcoin uh, ATM. Unfortunately, the closest Bitcoin ATM was, a, was about two and a half hours away from the victim. Um, so what he did was he sent $15,000 in cash in the FedEx box and sent to a second romance skip victim. And when looking at the check, the check had touched um, one other state before it ended up coming to Texas. And then that account got, um, and then that account was created in Texas. Victim went and deposited the check, withdrew the check, and then sent $15,000 in cash over to Rogers, Arkansas. So it's something where exaggerated line, a lot of actors will use very, very, they, they will go many steps in order to make sure that money um, touches as many people as they can to make it that much more difficult to detect this stuff. The other thing too, is when you go and actually talk to this romance victim and you say, okay, I went and you committed this type of fraud, your victim's gonna come back and be like, no, I never committed this fraud. I was cashing it for my girlfriend's inheritance because of the lawyer. So even as a law enforcement person going to talk to a lot of these victims, the story becomes very muddy, very distorted, and actually getting to the truth of what really, really happened becomes extremely difficult. And that's another problem of BEC is that it become, it's very hard to actually uncover what's really going on. Um, another case where we saw, um, we only, and this was a reference where we only had the passwords, but I will let you guys be the ones to draw those uh, con similar conclusions. So with this uh, victim, we only had names and passwords. Um, initially, she started off with things like forever for you, strong for you, um, and eventually her passwords were changing and she was sending the passwords to the scammers for the accounts and everything. And she was creating accounts for the, um, and she was creating accounts for the scammer to use. Um, and again, some of those accounts where we are, we are forever, uh, two hearts, one love. So you could tell clearly that this is something where this is going, this is more than likely a romance victim. Um, unfortunately, as time went on, you started seeing a uh, clear degradation in the passwords, um, such as like too tired for this, too much mystery. And the final correspondence that we saw with the victim um, was the victim had sent her IRA account to the scammers. Um, unfortunately, we don't have any evidence that they had cashed out, but the actor had all the information that they needed in order to cash out that IRA fund. Um, and unfortunately, a month later, uh, we saw that Jane had passed away. We were able to map back who the victim was. We found her obituary. Um, it turns out that with Jane, she was a stay-at-home mom of three kids. Uh, she was very much uh, loved spending time with the grandkids, but unfortunately, um, the husband was out of the picture, wasn't really sure what happened with the husband there. Um, and the kids had lived in other parts of the country. Um, and it was something where all along, Jane just wanted to be loved. And she, all through her life, she had people in her, she had people there at the house where she was homeschooling the kids. She really enjoyed just spending time with family, but she was single. She was alone. She wanted love. And she ended up on the wrong side of the scam. And eventually she ended up cashing out once she sent the stuff, the IRA account to the, um, to the scammers and everything, they went, we really think that they went and cashed that out and everything. Um, a month after she passed away, they started filing for auto loans um, in her name. Um, so yeah, they were doing that after she died, uh, vroom vroom. So another wonderful thing, uh, not wonderful at all, um, is that we've also seen suicide attempts related to this. So with one of the uh, romance victims that we saw, they were purchasing gift cards for the actor. Um, and this woman became paranoid and delusional that people were after her. Um, and unfortunately, she had a right to be paranoid that people were watching her because this, the actor had actually hacked into her account and was watching all of her emails. Um, so much so that there was one point where she became extremely frustrated and flustered. And the scammer was like, do you want to talk to my friend at the CIA? And she's like, yeah. So the scammer went and we think the scammer went and opened another account, talked to her quote unquote from the CIA and um, was able to calm her down. Um, unfortunately, she attempted to commit suicide and she actually went and told the scammer, she was like, I lost it. I tried to commit suicide. My mother had me committed. And the, instead of the scammer being like, oh, I'm sorry, I was a scammer. The scammer took this as a wonderful opportunity to send her a picture and say, you know, this is me. I've always, I've always been here for you and everything in order to try and reel in that relationship and be like, okay, yes, you tried to commit suicide, but 
no, I'm going to keep using you for check fraud. And a week, within a week, she, they were sending, um, they were sending, using that person order to send fake checks. Um, as mentioned with gift cards, um, gift card fraud is something that's very popular with scammers as well. And what BEC actors and other related actors will do is they'll usually use something like, hey, this is your employee actor reward program um, in order to try and get that person to go and buy cards. So they'll, may, they'll say, hey, go ahead and send pictures of the cards and we'll go ahead and we'll use that um, in, order to reward the, in order to reward our employees. Specifically, the way that they use this is they'll use Bitcoin and um, other currents, they'll use Bitcoin and other related exchanges in order to convert the gift cards to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, excuse me, so that they could go ahead and continue cashing that out. So if you have to send them like a $100 gift card, for example, they can then take that, convert that over to $70 worth of Bitcoin. And at that point, it's something where they don't have to continue manipulating a romance victim, a romance mule, and send it through this network of mules. They can just directly get their cash out in Bitcoin. And it's something where not only are they able to bypass the banking processes, it's something where tracking Bitcoin becomes much more difficult on that. Um, the other thing too is very much what I've kind of mentioned is that there are so many gaps in BEC that as we're starting to understand this, a lot of victims don't even know they're victims. Um, and that's the unfortunate thing with a lot of this stuff is that when you go and talk to this person who's sending that money to them and in their mind, they're actually in a relationship with this person. However, on the, up, on the opposite side, it's something where the scammer is actually manipulating them in order to believe these things. They're telling them lies in order to continue using them as a mule. And when you actually talk with these romance victims, it's something where it completely blows their mind. And unfortunately, a lot of them stay in the scheme because again, it's something where it's extremely traumatic to pull themselves out of that. They've had all of these emotions, all of these positive emotions with it. So they're like, okay, th this can't be real. This can't be fake. It has to be real. Um, and the other thing too, again, not all these crimes are reported because if you've been victimized and if you were taken advantage of and you went and cashed hundreds of thousands of dollars, you're going to feel guilty for doing this type of work. And that's the problem is a lot of these victims won't talk. And a lot of these victims, frankly, don't want to talk at something where if they feel that horrible about it, um, they're just not going to go and willingly talk about it. Additionally, when you go and actually start engaging with a lot of these people, um, law enforcement in some cases will be very demeaning to that victim. So in some cases, when they go and talk of them, they'll actually treat them as being stupid. And it's something where if you're working with a victim, it, you can't do that because if you're treating a victim as less than human, they're not going to want to talk to you and they're not going to be willing to work with you. So you have to be understanding, you have to be compassionate on some of this in order to understand the psychological abuse and what's really going on. Uh, a lot of these victims really go through a lot and some of the, and a lot of places and myself being included on this, we don't call them victims. We call them survivors just because they've been through that much trauma over the years and the scammers have pushed them that far in a lot of things. Um, the other thing too, uh, specific to day gaps, 160 checks, 30 states. How do you track that? A list of 2000 W2s sent from a company. Who do you report that fraud to? It becomes very, very hard to track all of these things and actually try and get convictions for this type of crime. And it's something where all through the fighting of BEC that we've done over the years, we've learned a whole heck of a lot of things about how this works. But unfortunately, there's a lot that we don't know. And unfortunately, there's even more that we don't of things that we don't know that we don't know. Some of the facts of BEC, BEC is 40% of all cybercrime reported to IC3. Uh, when you start including that, it's over 70% of the fraud um, as reported to them. When you start including other things like romance scams that are directly related to the stuff and actually use as part of that infrastructure. Um, we know $25 billion in losses, tons of emotional damage, um, death, suicide, and depression tied to this stuff, lost homes, lost mortgages, uh, lost life savings. And again, that's just what we know. And just and with Stewie, this is probably going to be you tonight, trying to go to bed tonight and everything, thinking, man, there's a lot of things that are actually overlapping there. But when we talk about the romance victims, we can't actually talk about those victims without talking about the victims in Nigeria. And you, again, you're probably looking at me absolutely nuts, being like, okay, wait, you're now talk, tell, saying that the scammers are victims? You know what? When you actually start digging into that, it's something where those lines also start blurring too. And there's a lot more that's driving BEC than we actually realize. So one of the problems in Nigeria is there's a very deep culture of corruption. And it's something where the government is all, the police and the government is extremely corrupted. 
um, bribes and stealing for money is something that's very common and that, ha that happens and they're fairly regular. Um, I started digging into trying to understand like what people in Nigeria have to go through. Um, and in 2015, there was an incident where a cop had asked a cab driver for um, the equivalent of 10 US dollars and everything. Um, the driver didn't have the money, so he didn't give, it, give them the money. So what the cop did was he got out of the car, he shot the driver, and he shot the pregnant wife in the back, the driver's pregnant wife in the back, in the head, who was back in the back seat and everything driving with the person. That's some of the problems that, and that's a level of corruption that goes through some of these things. Um, additionally, there's an absolutely horrible job market in Nigeria right now. Um, it's not really easy to make money in Nigeria. Um, the current youth unemployment rate is over 50%. And for the youth, we, that's defined as anyone between the ages of 15 and 35. Um, so it's something where culturally it becomes extremely difficult for people to actually find work. Um, there are no unemployment benefits in Nigeria like there are here, where if you're out of work, you can't go and get help. It's just, you're done. That's it. There's no help for you. Um, and, and we actually saw one case where an actor spent 16 months trying to apply for jobs. Uh, they applied for work outside the country. They had applied for visas. They tried to actually get out of Nigeria and couldn't find a job. And they had to go and become a scammer because, again, they were just trying to make a livelihood in order to just continue doing this stuff. Um, the other thing is that voodoo and money rituals play very, very close with the Yahoo boys, a.k.a. what the scammers are called on the ground. Um, the thing is that with voodoo and money rituals, the way that these work, is that a lot of scammers, in order to continue doing this type of work, they will go and get these certain types of blessings in order to do this. So it may be something where they may need to drink this one thing um, or do this and that um, in order to kind of keep going through and continue operating. Um, here's one case where someone um, almost tried to, almost uh, was used as a human sacrifice um, as one of these, um, as one of these uh, type of scams. Um, and specifically, this is called Yahoo Plus, where you're, where as a Yahoo boy, you can be quote unquote promoted to the next level of Yahoo boy. And a, in a lot of cases for those blood sacrifices, um, it requires a human sacrifice. So uh, here's another instance where uh, it was four people, it was four people, two were arrested. Um, they actually killed their grandmother in order to try and do this type of fraud, um, in order to continue doing this type of thing. And again, this is just the truth of how this stuff works. A lot of your scammers will actually do these rituals, do these type of things um, in order to bless their earnings. And once they bless their earnings, they will become that much more confident and go for a higher amount. So it's kind of, it becomes this vicious cycle where they just continue doing this more and more and more. Um, additionally, just as we have moms here who will be part of a football group and who will make things like lasagna for, um, for your football team, you also have Mother of Yahoo Boys. So Mother of Yahoo Boys now has an association and the Mother of the Yahoo Boys will now go and uh, work to help, um, will go and help cover and help protect a lot of these people who's doing this type of fraud. Um, because again, it comes out with a lot of the Yahoo boys who are who have this money are now putting it back into the country. So now it becomes a case of what's good and bad locally on the ground. Because again, you see all this poverty, you see all this death, you see all of these po uh, police officers who are going committing fraud and shooting pregnant pregnant wives in the head. Um, and you and you're like, okay, I'm gonna go steal from a couple people across the ocean. And it really becomes a thing where, okay, if this is how bad it really is on the ground in Nigeria, and they're stealing some money from a romance victim, to them, it's really not all that bad. Because again, it's a matter of putting all that into perception to understand the struggles that a lot of these scammers are really going through. Um, it's something where voodoo, again, has also been closely tied with BEC and 419. Um, and Krebs actually covered this back in 2013. Um, it was something where, again, it's like, okay, trying to talk about that black magic and that, that ya the Yahoo boys are practicing in order to continue doing this fraud. And again, it's now becoming less of a, okay, let's go and arrest everybody. It's now becoming an ideology fight where we now have to understand this. Because again, we can go and put all these people in jail all day long. But until we actually start understanding how the criminals work and how they operate, we're never going to make any headway. Um, and it's something where, yes, for us here in the States, tricking someone that money, yeah, that's bad. And to them, they feel like if they can, fool, if they can trick you out of that money, aka make you fall mugu, then it's something where it's free game. Um, a, lot of scammers, a lot of the scammers will also use reparation as an excuse in order to um, continue scamming. And they feel like because 
um, people who are white have stolen from people in Nigeria all these years, they're like, we're just taking our money back. So it, it, that's another motivation for a lot of them. Um, again, Yahoo boys give back to Nigeria. So again, it becomes extremely difficult. Uh, ministers, government officials are in it. It's okay to pay somebody off. Um, so it becomes really, really difficult to start tracking a lot of this stuff. Again, you have some high profile actors such as Hus Puppy who get involved with this. Um, and again, it's something where with the poverty in Nigeria, we, that's something that we have to understand, we have to see, is that there's a ton of problems in there. There are some locals who hate the scammers, but again, it's something where we have to understand all of these things that are related to it. Um, and it's something where if you had the choice of picking a good life for your family or living in poverty, what would you pick? Uh, I've never been in that position to where I've had to try and go and scam somebody just to survive. But again, this is the choices that a lot of scammers have. And again, starting to wrap up, it's something where a lot of other things that are related to 419 scams, you got human trafficking, drug trafficking, money laundering, and again, a dozen scams I miss as part of this. Again, it's the same actors doing the same thing. And seriously, it's an absolute mess. And it's clearly defined as a dumpster fire. Oh, and uh, in order to make this BEC dumpster fire worse, Russia is getting into it too. Uh, we saw a group called Cosmic Links that was targeting 46 countries. Uh, in mid-2019, we also saw overlaps in infrastructure with Emotet and TrickBot. Um, the infrastructure that they were hosted on um, was, uh, they were using some of those families too. We were, we were not under clear if it was something where it's the same actors doing the same thing, um, but there was clear overlaps with some of those groups. These scammers are very well written. Uh, we've seen Japanese, French, and English, and in every case, uh, it was very clear, it was very clearly written as almost like a local wrote that. Um, they asked for much higher amounts. So again, why use malware when you can just ask for money? And again, we're now starting to try and fight the stigma of BEC that there's a lot of fraud, there's a lot of things that are overlapping with it. And again, it often gets brushed under the table of, oh, it's low tech and unemployment. But, like, unimportant. but again, that's what's causing the biggest piece of the pie why go and focus on a 2% problem when we can go and focus on a 70% problem? Again, this is all of the information. You guys have access to the information just as well as I do. The statistics are out there. IC3 2019 report, file type PDF. That's how you, that's how you find it. And again, we're also finding the stigma, stigma of romance victims falling victim to this. Um, and a lot of them, again, get, uh, get chalked up to being a stupid user. But again, just because you have different knowledge, just because you went through life, and you learned different things doesn't make you stupid. Just because you may not know how to rebuild an engine, just because you may not know how to map a protein in, um, in a genetic structure or tie a fishing lore, that doesn't make you less smart than somebody else. It's just you went, got different knowledge um, as you went through life. And maybe it's us who's the weird ones, and maybe we need to start having a little patience with these victims because, again, they're being used and manipulated, and we have to start explaining that stuff to them. Um, and again, some of the failures that we've had in fighting BEC is, is absolutely massive, and that's how it needs to be treated. Again, a lot of people will go and fight BEC and see, think of it as one individual silo, but again, that's a symptom of something that has been long persisting for multiple years before that. Um, we really, 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 really desperately need more people talking about it, more people looking at it, more people diving into it. Because again, as one of the people who tracks this stuff every single break, every single waking hour and with every breath, it's an absolute mess. And we need to start, um, and we really need to start doing it. And again, if BEC is something that's that easy, why don't we take a year or something to start addressing this, start fixing it so that we can just clean this crap up and make it go away. And again, the best way to, to eat the BEC elephant is one bite at a time with a lot of friends. So in closing, I've been updating the slide since 2016. I got tired of updating it. So this is BEC losses that we know. Here's literally everything else and whatnot. And again, we can report that stuff uh, mathematically as coming from IC3. So it's something where it's an absolute mess. Um, here are my sources for a lot of the screenshots and everything. And I think I am right at time if I am looking at my clock right. So again, are there any questions or whatnot? Um, and again, feel free to follow me on Twitter. If you have any questions on there, just shoot me a DM. My DMs are open. And uh, make sure to follow my boss, Crane. He also makes scammers cry and curse at him. Uh, and he'll go ahead and he occasionally has, um, he'll do engagements and live tweet a lot of the engagements that we do too with the actors. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions if there's time still.